dear audience assalamu alaikum i am professor shamsud jaman professor of pathology i welcome all in today's 15th lecture on hematology today's topic is multiple myeloma before going to discuss about multiple myeloma we have to recapitulate first para proteinemia now come to para proteinemia what do you mean about para proteinemia presence of para protein presence of para protein para protein in blood is called para proteinemia so presence of para protein in blood is called para proteinemia now come to what is para protein para protein you know protein now come to what is para protein identical immunoglobulin identical immunoglobulin molecules or identical fragments fragments of immunoglobulin or identical fragments of immunoglobulin produced by produced by monoclonal monoclonal population population of plasmacytic plasmacytic or lymphocytic cell so identical immunoglobulin molecules or identical fragments of immunoglobulin produced by monoclonal population of plasma cytic or lymphocytic cell derived from derived from single precursor cell single precursor cell is called para protein is called para protein again identical immunoglobulin molecules or identical fragments of immunoglobulin produced by monoclonal population of plasmacytic or lymphocytic cell that is derived from single precursor cell derived from single precursor cell is called para protein here i have told you identical immunoglobulin dear audience we have to recapitulate first immunoglobulins first come to immunoglobulins
what is the structure of immunoglobulin it is composed of two heavy sense and two light sense and two light sense suppose these two are heavy sense and this is the light sense so red two are the light sense and other two are the heavy sense i g g immunoglobulin g is composed of two heavy sense and two light sense the two heavy sense of immunoglobulin g is Two gamma, two gamma sense. These are heavy sense, and two light sense, and both light sense either lambda or kappa. Light sense are either. kappa or lambda or lambda what it means if it is igg these two are the gamma and red two are the either these two are kappa or these two are lambda this is igg then come to iga immunoglobulin the two alpha heavy chains two alpha heavy chains and two light chains either kappa or lambda or lambda then igm immunoglobulin to mu heavy chains and to light chains and these are either kappa or lambda a lambda then immunoglobulin d the heavy chains are two delta heavy chains and two light chains and the two light chains like before either kappa or lambda kappa or lambda and the last one is ige ige this ige composed of two heavy chains and the heavy chain is called epsilon two epsilon heavy chains and two light chains either kappa or lambda or lambda so these are the immunoglobulins that present in our plasma dear audience you see all the immunoglobulins has two heavy chains and two light chains and the light chains in all cases either two lambda or two kappa if this is the heavy chain two heavy chains and if this is the light chains both light chains either it will be lambda or it will be kappa one lambda one kappa it is not
dear audience you know immunoglobulins are synthesized by plasma cells and the plasma cells are derived from proliferation of B lymphocytes suppose this is a precursor cell this is a precursor cell if the precursor cell is stimulated by antigen antigenic stimulation if there is antigenic stimulation if there is antigenic stimulation to the precursor cell what will happen normally this precursor cell proliferates proliferates into more than one clones. So, on antigenic stimulation in physiological condition the precursor cell proliferates into more than one clones of cell. And these clones of cell these clones of cell synthesize synthesize immunoglobulins immunoglobulins and normally if all the immunoglobulins are similar but not identical so the synthesized immunoglobulins from the more than one clones of cell derived from the single precursor cell again the synthesized immunoglobulins from the more than one clones of cells that are derived from the single precursor cell are similar but not identical. So, the immunoglobulins immunoglobulins are similar but not identical but not identical what do we mean by this that the immunoglobulins are similar but not identical suppose more than one clones of cells synthesized 100 immunoglobulin G. In normal physiological condition out of 100 about suppose about 70 immunoglobulins or immunoglobulin G bears 2 lambda and rest 30 immunoglobulins bears 2 kappa. So, all the 100 immunoglobulins bears same heavy chain that is gamma, both are gamma in 100 IgG. In case of 70 immunoglobulins, the heavy chains are gamma, but the light chains are are kappa. It is in 70. And in the rest 30, rest 30, the heavy chains are gamma also gamma gamma but the light chains are lambda it is 30 immunoglobulins so all are igg these are similar all are igg similar igg but they are not identical because some bears kappa, some bears lambda, but they are IgG. So, this is called 
the immunoglobulins are similar but not identical and this is the physiology this is the physiology now come to what about the identical immunoglobulins what we mean about identical immunoglobulins immunoglobulins if this is the precursor cell on stimulation if monoclonal population of cell monoclonal population of cell is obtained so on stimulation if monoclonal population of cell is obtained from the precursor cell from the precursor cell this monoclonal population of cell will synthesize the identical immunoglobulins identical immunoglobulins what it means if 100 immunoglobulins igg is produced all igg having gamma and all igg contains either lambda or kappa that is 100 igg contains kappa or 100 igg contains lambda so these are similar and identical this is called identical immunoglobulins again I recall if 100 IgG bears lambda or kappa light chains then these immunoglobulins are called identical immunoglobulins and this identical immunoglobulins produced by the monoclonal population of plasmacytic or lymphocytic cells is called paraprotein. Now come to the classification of paraproteinemia, classification of paraproteinemia. It may be myeloma, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. light chain disease heavy chain disease heavy chain disease chronic lymphocytic leukemia non Hodgkin's lymphoma benign monoclonal benign monoclonal gammopathy so these are the paraproteinemias Classification of paraproteinemia, myeloma, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, 
light chain disease, heavy chain disease, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, benign monoclonal gammopathy. Now come to multiple myeloma. Before that, come to myeloma. What is myeloma? What is myeloma? Myeloma is the malignant neoplasm of plasma cell. Malignant neoplasm. A plasma cell is called myeloma. Dear audience, you know plasma cell has eccentric nucleus and curved will appearance of the nucleus, and this is the plasma cell. And you know plasma cell synthesize immunoglobulins. This is plasma cell and it synthesizes immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins. If cancer of this plasma cell, this cancer or malignant neoplasm plasma cell is called myeloma. Now come the types of myeloma. Or classification of myeloma. Solitary myeloma, solitary myeloma. It is also called solitary plasma cytoma. It is also called solitary plasma cytoma. It occurs as solitary relation in bone or in soft tissue. It occurs as solitary relation, solitary relation in bones or in soft tissue. then multiple myeloma multiple myeloma now come to multiple myeloma in details first we have to know what is multiple myeloma multiple myeloma is multifocal plasma cell cancer that occurs in osseous system. Plasma cell cancer that occurs multifocally in osseous system is called multiple myeloma. So, solitary myeloma is solitary lesion in multiple myeloma multiple lesions in the osseous system. If anybody suffers from multiple myeloma what may be the clinical presentation. Dear audience, if this is the medullary cavity, this is the cortical part of bone, you know medullary cavity contains bone marrow and if this is the plasma cell in the bone marrow, the plasma cell cancer within the bone marrow that occurs multifocally is called multiple myeloma. So, in case of multiple myeloma, the bone marrow is packed up with the immature plasma cells. The bone marrow is packed up with the immature 
plasma cells and the cancer cell in case of myeloma is called myeloma cell the cancer cell of myeloma is called myeloma cell so in other word the bone marrow is packed up or medullary cavity is packed up with the myeloma cell as marrow or medullary cavity is packed up with myeloma cell there will be depression of erythroid series depression of granulopoiesis and depression of megakaryocytes so what may be the clinical presentations clinical presentations intense bone pain intense bone pain why intense bone pain because myeloma cells secretes a factor and that factor activates osteoclast osteoclast as osteoclast is activated in the bone there is bone resorption there is tiny fracture within the bone so fracture of bone and it leads to intense pain intense pain the another clinical presentation symptoms of anemia why anemia as the marrow is packed up with myeloma cell the erythropoiesis is depressed so decreased number of rbc is formed from the marrow due to decreased number of formation of rbc the patient become anemic so there is symptoms of anemia like pallor fatigue palpitation effort intolerance etc frequent fever frequent fever why frequent fever as the marrow is packed up with myeloma cell the wbc production is hampered so patient may develop leukopenia and due to leukopenia body defense is not maintained so there is chance of infection and due to frequent infection there is frequent fever hemorrhagic manifestations hemorrhagic manifestations like nasal bleeding gum bleeding etc why hemorrhagic manifestations as the marrow is packed up with myeloma cell megakaryocyte is depressed so there is thrombocytopenia sometimes and if there is thrombocytopenia there will be hemorrhagic manifestations pathological fracture of bone pathological fracture of bone why pathological fracture of bone dear audience you know fracture of bone due to presence of pathology within the bone following minute trauma so if anybody suffers from any pathology within the bone and having pathology in the bone if the bone undergo fracture due to minimum trauma this is called pathological fracture as there is 
osteoclastic activity in case of myeloma is increased due to increased osteoclastic activity there is thinning of bone and so there is chance of pathological fracture dear audience you know there are so many causes of pathological fracture of bone one of the cause is the multiple myeloma what are other causes just you can recapitulate osteoporosis other metastatic tumor of bone other chronic osteomyelitis other lytic stage of paget's disease again what are other causes of pathological fracture i have told you here multiple myeloma other than multiple myeloma chronic osteomyelitis osteoporosis lytic stage of paget's disease metastatic tumor of bone etc what are other clinical presentations there may be blurring of vision blurring of vision why blurring of vision you know it is a paraproteinemia paraprotein in blood due to presence of paraprotein in blood the viscosity of blood is raised due to raised viscosity of blood there is sluggish flow of blood through the retinal artery due to sluggish flow of blood through the retinal artery there is blurring of vision renal insufficiency renal insufficiency so these are the different clinical presentations of patient having multiple myeloma now come to if anybody suffers from multiple myeloma may come to you with intense bone pain hemorrhagic manifestations symptoms of anemia etc etc if you suspect it could be a case of multiple myeloma what investigations you will suggest to diagnose it now come to laboratory diagnosis of multiple myeloma we have to do blood examination biochemical test urine for benzons protein bone marrow examination we have to do plasma protein electrophoresis plasma protein electrophoresis electrophoresis now come to one after another blood examination blood examination we have to do hemoglobin estimation as the patient is anemic it will be reduced it will be reduced then we have to do esr ESR is very high very high then we have to do total leukocyte count the total leukocyte count may be normal within normal range or may be leukopenia in the latter stage if there is decreased production of wbc then we can get leukopenia so normal or sometimes leukopenia d 
PLC differential leukocyte count. Initially, the differential leukocyte count is normal, that is normal distribution. Later on, there may be neutropenia also. DLC normal distribution. Then we have to do peripheral blood film. It is important for diagnosis of multiple myeloma. First come to RBC series. Cells are normocytic and normochromic. Normochromic with increased rule of formation. Cells are normocytic and normochromic with increased rule of formation. Dear audience, we know what are the causes of normocytic normochromic anemia morphologically. We know aplastic anemia acute hemorrhagic anemia and also multiple myeloma. In multiple myeloma, we get normocytic normochromic RBC. But in case of multiple myeloma along with this, there is increased rule of formation. And due to increased rule of formation, we get very high ESR. Sometimes, nucleated red cell may be found. Why we get nucleated red cell? As the patient is anemic due to anemia, the bone marrow is stimulated for rapid production of RBC. Due to rapid production of RBC, some nucleated red cell they come from bone marrow in peripheral blood. WBC series cells are mature with normal count or leukopenia. Platelets Platelet normal, that is adequate or decreased. In the latter stage of multiple myeloma, platelets is decreased. Now come to biochemical tests. Biochemical tests. We do total plasma protein it is raised why raised plasma protein because it is a case of para proteinemia in multiple myeloma there is production of para protein due to para protein total plasma protein is increased Dear audience, now come to albumin, globulin ratio. You know normal albumin globulin ratio is 2 is to 1, normal is 2 is to 1. As here there is para protein in blood. So, globulin portion is relatively raised. So, albumin globulin ratio is decreased. So, it will be decreased. The ratio is decreased. Then, C 
serum calcium. The serum calcium is elevated, elevated. Why elevation of serum calcium level? Dear audience, you know as the myeloma cell activates the osteoclast, due to activation of osteoclast, there is bone resorption and due to bone resorption from the bone calcium come in plasma. So, there is elevation of serum calcium. Now, come to urine for benzone protein. Benzone protein. Dear audience, you know light chain of immunoglobulin is lighter, low molecular weight than the heavy chain. Due to low molecular weight, light chain alone may come in urine, may appear in urine. It can pass it through the kidney. If anybody suffers from multiple myeloma and if there is fragments of immunoglobulin like light chain in the blood, the light chain can pass through the kidney and may appear in the urine. This light chain present in urine in case of multiple myeloma first detected by scientist benzones. According to scientist benzones, it is called benzones protein. You can detect in urine by two ways. One is heat coagulation test. Heat coagulation test, and you can detect by electrophoresis. Electrophoresis of concentrated urine. Of concentrated urine. And this light chain of immunoglobulin that is known as benzone's protein, according to scientist benzones, you can detect in urine in about 40 to 50 percent cases of multiple myeloma. Now come to bone marrow. bone marrow examination. Dear audience, in case of multiple myeloma, there is cancer of plasma cell within the bone marrow. So, there is hypercellular marrow. Marrow is hypercellular. marrow is hypercellular and this hypercellularity is due to cells other than cells of erythropoiesis. So, marrow is hypercellular with increased myeloid erythroid ratio. Erythropoiesis is depressed, but normoblastic. Due to neoplastic proliferation of plasma cells, as the marrow is packed up with myeloma cell, so erythropoiesis is depressed. Granulopoiesis is depressed with all stage of maceration, with all stages of maceration. As marrow is packed up with myeloid muscles, so there is depression of granulopoiesis. Granulopoiesis is depressed with all stages of maceration. Major pressure, major pressure of marrow is 
replaced replaced by sheets of immature plasma cells major portion of marrow is replaced by sheets of immature plasma cells these immature plasma cells are the myeloma cells dear audience you know in normal bone marrow if you search plasma cell you will get a few number of plasma cells in the marrow but if it is a case of multiple myeloma you will get sheets of immature plasma cells and these are the myeloma cells Megakaryocyte, megakaryocyte seen decreased in number. Megakaryocyte seen decreased in number in later stage, but in early stage, megakaryocyte may be adequate. No parasite formed. no parasite found in the marrow examined. This is the bone marrow findings of multiple myeloma. Now come to last one plasma protein electrophoresis. Plasma protein electrophoresis. If we do electrophoresis of plasma protein, we will get their albumin globulin. In addition to this, we will get monoclonal protein that is para protein in myeloma. It is called M protein that is monoclonal protein. We will get M protein, M protein that is monoclonal protein, monoclonal protein. And this monoclonal protein is the para protein in multiple myeloma. This is all about the multiple myeloma. Dear audience, today's topic was multiple myeloma. I have told you about the para protein, the definition of para protein. I have told you classification of para proteinemia. I have told you what is myeloma, classification of myeloma what is multiple myeloma, clinical presentations of multiple myeloma, laboratory diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Today up to this, thanks all.